Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are shooting another edition of Whiteboard Wednesday. And today we're going to talk about the concept of what's called HTTP Strict Transport Security, or HSTS. And, uh, and I'm going to give you a couple of use cases uh, to start this thing off uh, to tell you maybe why this would be important. So I've drawn a little uh, diagram up here. Let's say you have a client uh, accessing a certain URL for your backend web application or your web servers and you're doing SSL offload on your big IP. And let's say that your client requests this URL and your big IP is doing some sort of a payload inspection to know when to, when to switch an HTTP request to an HTTPS request because you want to make sure all this stuff is secure. Um, Maybe there's been some rewrites done or some redirections done or whatever, and so this payload inspection doesn't necessarily know about, say, one of these new, uh, you know, new rewrites. And so when you request uh, potentially a given URL to your backend web server, then this may not know to, to transfer that from HTTP to HTTPS. And so, uh, so then potentially a, uh, the server is going to supply um, back a, an unencrypted URL, an HTTP URL, and then your client's going to say, okay, well, hey, I'm going to access this, uh, this application via HTTP now. Uh, another thing may be um, there may not be a payload match at all because the, uh, the rewrite may be done on the client, uh, say with Ajax, that kind of thing. And so anyway, so that's, so there, there, that's, one, uh, that's one scenario where using SSL offload um, may turn into a client request that, that results ultimately in an HTTP connection while you wanted it to be HTTPS. Uh, another use case would be, let's say uh, you're a lazy web user out there like myself, and you just cannot be bothered with typing in HTTPS colon slash slash, you know, example.com. So when you go to your address bar in your web browser, you just type in example.com and that's it, and you just let it take care of the rest. Well, that may or may not transfer to an HTTPS connection. And in fact, when you put it in initially, it's going to be HTTP. And so, uh, so anyway, so there's a couple of use cases where, um, where you're going to want to implement this thing called HTTP uh, Strict Transport Security. And I know I just put HSTS right there, uh, but it stands again for HTTP Strict Transport Security. And basically what that is, is that is going to force the connection or this, uh, you know, this, this traffic to happen over HTTPS instead of HTTP. And that's done via this, uh, this header response that can, that can be configured back here on your, uh, either on, on your infrastructure or your application server. But I'm going to put the, a header response right here on this side. So when a client requests your web application, then the response is going to say, hey, this needs to be done via strict transport security. And so it has a response of STS, and it includes a couple of things. It says max age, and then it includes uh, another thing that says include subdomains. Subdomains. So let me write all that out there. Okay. So the max age, this is uh, set in seconds. And what that is, what you just put the number of seconds. A lot of people do, uh, I'd say, a year's worth of seconds. And basically what that is is when the client requests your web application for that number of seconds, then any transaction that that client has with your web application is going to be done in, via HTTPS for that amount of time. And then include subdomains. Uh, you can include that or not. Include subdomains basically means, let's say you have, uh, you have a domain of example.com, example.com, then anything in front of that, I'll just put an asterisk right there, asterisk.example.com would also be included if you include subdomains in, your, uh, in this response header. And so uh, a, couple of, a couple of reasons that you may not want to do that actually, or you may not want to implement this, is let's say you have several different applications, um, but not all of them are secure. And so you may want to say, hey, let me not strictly force HTTPS on, on my client. Um, and so in that case, you may not quite want to go HSTS just yet. Um, I, I was reading a couple different guys talking about this, and they said, hey, when you flip the switch to HSTS, you need to make sure that you're ready for that, that 
that none of your applications are still going to require just HTTP or or uh, you know or else it's you're going to have some problems. And so uh, so anyway, so uh, you can include subdomains or not, and uh, and then once you do that, then anything in front of the example.com is going to be uh, strictly uh, transported via HTTPS. Um, so anyway, so that's a couple of uh, couple of different things on why you may want to do it or why you may not want to do it. Uh, of course, the reason to do it is exactly what we talked about up here. Uh, you want to protect from one of these scenarios with, uh, say, you know, payload inspection for URL redirects um, or just those lazy users that type in, you know, the, uh, the web address and don't put the HTTPS in front of it. Um, as a, a couple of notes here from a, from a big IP, from an F5 specific perspective, uh, for version, for uh, big IP version, uh, let's see, version 11, dot three and earlier we have an I rule that uh, that was written uh, to take care of this and it acts and, and essentially what it does is it looks at the HTTP VIP and it, it does a, uh, a response to say hey let's look uh, let's let's uh, respond with with the HTTPS uh, domain and URI and and then it and then it looks at the HTTPS VIP and it sends back that response header that we just talked about setting these different parameters. And so that rule, man, that rule's been out there since like 2010. Jason Rom did a great job, uh, wrote it up. It's been, uh, it's been out there. People have used it uh, for five years now. Um, starting with 11.4, uh, if you guys have seen some of our other whiteboard videos, you know that we have, uh, we have uh, policies, local traffic policies. And so you could certainly still use an iRule. But now you have local traffic policies that you could use with 11.4, and uh, you can do the same thing via a policy. So now 11.4, you have two different options to take care of this. And then what's exciting is in 12.0, um, this is a, I'm just gonna put a little check right there, because now starting in 12.0, this is literally just a checkbox on your uh, HTTP profile. So now the VIP that you want to uh, establish all this on, um, you create an HTTP, an HTTP profile, and then in that profile, you literally check HSTS enabled, and then there's a couple other things you're gonna check is, a, uh, is the max age in seconds, and then if you wanna include subdomains or not, which is, which is this part that we talked about with the header. Uh, so now, what, what started off as an I rule and then uh, turned into something you could do in policy is now literally just a checkbox. Uh, and so this is a good example as well of people that have provided feedback saying, hey, this is an I rule that does awesome stuff. Can you put it into the product and create the functionality in the product? And uh, here's another great example of how that's, how that's kind of moved from I rule to in product functionality. And then, uh, and then the last thing I'll mention are the different browsers because again, the client needs to know, hey, whenever I do this uh, transaction, I've got to request this via HTTPS. And so the other question is, well, how many browsers actually support that? And the good news is any modern browser, I'm going to say within the last couple of years or so, does support this. But if you have an older version, uh, I think Internet Explorer, sh shockingly, was one of the last ones to kind of come on board with this. Version 11 of Internet Explorer now does support it on uh, Windows 7, 8, 1, and 10. Uh, IE 12 supports it. Uh, as well, so uh, so anyway, so IE has caught up, but Chrome and Safari and uh, and Firefox and all the all the major browsers uh, now support this. So um, so anyway, if you're on if you're on a version of Big IP um, version 11.3 or before, you can do this via iRule. 11.4 and later, you can use iRule or policies. And 12.0, all you got to do is check a box. But it's good to know about this because frankly, the world that we live in today is moving toward. HTTPS, it's moving toward encrypting everything. And um, so as everything gets encrypted, this is just another feature that it's good to know about and it's good to know how to do this on the big IP. Uh, one other thing that I'll mention is there's, a, um, there's an SSL test that, uh, that Qualys Labs does. And you, wanna, you can go out there and type in your web address into their, into their site and they check a whole bunch of stuff with certificates and that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but this is one of the things, if you want to make an A-plus grade on that SSL Labs score, uh, then you have, to, you have to have HSTS uh, enabled and configured correctly. So, so anyway, so get out there and make an A-plus for your web application, configure HSTS, 
And, uh, and thanks for joining us today with this Whiteboard Wednesday video. We'll see you out there in the community.